Right, welcome back to a, another episode. Uh, unlike most of the stuff that we do on this channel, it's not going to be a podcast. It's going to be a uh, a cyberpunk discussion with uh, Moan Dane. How you doing, Moan Dane? Doing good this morning. Well, actually, afternoon now. Um, you know, I'm happy to be here. Uh, also happy to be talking about quite possibly one of my favorite, most favorite games. Um, there's another game that I absolutely love, but in some ways, that's more nostalgia speaking than than uh, than current stuff. What well, plays I have curiosity? Oh, uh, the old PlayStation One game, Grandia. That's getting a, uh, a HD it's, re-release. Yeah, it's it's already been uh, re-released on the Switch, I believe. Uh, I think it's getting some physical releases as well. Yeah, um, limited run. I've got I've got it wish wish listed. Never played Grand either. Yeah, it's uh, it's really great. Um, it has. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go off on a tangent. Yeah, um, well, you know, everybody knows what these are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these types of well, videos. I mean, like back okay so back in final fantasy 7 days and stuff everything was gloom and doom and you were here to save the world and that's what every rpg was grandia did not start off that way you you get to be a kid exploring trying to be this you know join the adventurers guild and stuff like your dad did and that's like the entire first half of the game where you just that's it. That like it's none of this gloom and doom. It was definitely a breath of fresh fresh air, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really kind of like just cheerful and uplifting and stuff. And then you know, of course, eventually things happen and you have to save the world. But it's not like it's not like this. I don't know, crushing, depressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some JRPGs, yeah, but, where it's, yeah, like, where like it's a very weighted story and stuff like that. Is it? Yeah, it is like traditional turn-based and stuff um, like that. It is traditional turn-based, but your characters have movement points, so they move around on on a three D plane and okay. attack things. It's very uh, very different uh, combat system because if you have enough movement points, you'll run towards the enemy and hit them. And then if you still have movement points left over, you'll spend those running away from the enemy so that they can't hit you. Oh, no, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting and um, definitely worth checking out. I'm very happy that you've pre-ordered the game. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard of the series, but never, never played it before. What, what did it release on it? Would have been what? Nintendo uh, it consoles released, or it, PlayStation? No. It was a, originally a PlayStation game. The actual like very beginning origins of it was the Sega Saturn, but it only released in Japan. Okay. Uh, and then and then, you know, companies picked it up and brought it over to the PlayStation because by the time that they were gonna bring it here, uh Saturn was already dead. <laughs> oh god. Well hopefully it'll get a a warmer release and I don't oh, know yeah. when it's dropping in the next few months, I assume. I'm hoping I never tell, so. I, like I, I can never tell with Limited yeah. Run because they, they print the they say to pre order these and then you never get the game until like eight months after or whatever. Oh yeah, I'm is it strictly limited games? They they they're too late. Two years late on delivering a game for me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, back to well, the polar opposite of you saying about oh, Grandia gosh. being nice and <laughs> nice and happy. I guess we go to Cyberpunk, and uh, a lot of it is doom yeah. and gloom in that game. And uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of dystopian world. I mean, it that's the source material is the old yep. tabletop RPG where it's just like, you know, um, they there's nothing wrong with. The world, actually, I mean, other than like what the story is, but like, I don't know. I, I played the tabletop RPG like back in the 90s. Um, 
and uh, I absolutely fell in love with the world, played the tabletop RPG through multiple campaigns. Um, and uh, as soon as I found out that they were going to release the game, I was absolutely hyped for it. Um, I remember hearing rumors about it, and then suddenly CDPR said, hey, we're doing this. I had mm. no idea who in the world CDPR was. Uh, my friend, Sinchatis, uh, he, he basically just said, oh, yeah, they're the people who did Witcher. And, and like, he's like, they, this should be really good because they did Witcher 3, and Witcher 3, you know, is now really good. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and, um, and I'd never heard of them before. But I saw how passionate they were about the world and uh, how they wanted to get everything right and how they were this did the same thing you know for uh, the Witcher 3 and I was like okay I'm, I'm definitely on board I you know I can't wait for this to come out and uh, I waited and waited <laughs> yeah but I guess that's like an to attorney the, yeah but yeah, as, yeah, as it gets us to the first question, it was um, something I wanted to pick on was uh, the pre-game hype for this game was, I think, because this released just before No Man's Sky. Um, so the there wasn't all that many games that kind of snowballed out of control like that. Yeah. It was it was definitely a case of over promise and under deliver, um, and uh, I mean, like I, I get it. You 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 want to hype the game up and all of this uh, stuff, but I was I was drinking the Kool Aid the whole way through. Like I was you way was too the, excited. You was on the wagon. <laughs> I was on the wagon, and I was absolutely hyped for it. A couple of things I was like looking at going. You know, huh? I don't think that adds up tech wise. I don't think they can pull this off. And I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe they're, they've discovered something and they're, they're better at, you know, at coding for the, for the systems and stuff like that than I'm giving them credit for. Um, because <clears throat> I mean, who knows? They might have taken everything that they've, you know, made a mistake and, tried to learn from it and apply it to the next thing. And so I just kind of kept giving them the benefit of the doubt over and over and over again. Yeah, especially because it's an in-house engine, isn't it? So they've crafted yeah, yeah, this uh, red engine. Um, yeah. They, they did wonders with uh, The Witcher 3. But a lot of people also forget that that game really released in a rough state. The yeah. vanilla 1.0 <laughs> release of The Witcher 3 was very, very, very rough. Nowhere near as rough as Cyberpunk, I should preface. Oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was something where they had to put in effort. And yeah. I think the, the trailers showed the vision of what they wanted to do. And when I saw that, I was I was a little bit skeptical, like with like the Mantis blades and stuff like that, and how much they were like shoving that you could. The the, 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 the so. yeah the movements <clears throat> seemed a little bit out there, and I was like, uh, I don't know about this. But then you look back at um, the Assassin's Creed like series and how well they've fine tuned the free running or, and the climbing, and you can just literally climb anything now. Like there's no yeah, longer you need to edge. be yeah. You don't no longer yeah. need to be attached to like a specific piece of wood or paint and stuff like that that some other open world games do. So I I gave them a little bit more credit and was like, yeah, maybe they could pull it off. And then, you know, with the release, we all saw how that went. And it was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I was on. I was definitely on the wagon. Uh, this this game was an absolute dream come true for me, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, I was I was just sitting there thinking, well, the source material is so good, so the game cannot help but be good. Uh, and then I, you know, ignored the fact that 
people are human and and uh people can make mistakes with like uh trying to apply whatever world or anything like that and you know make basic mistakes in the engines and stuff like that and it's like okay so yeah after it came out oh man i remember <laughs> Which I, just, um, I remember every console that you that you played on the PS4 first. I, I played say. it on the PS4 first. Mm-hmm. Is that the PS4 like base model or the Pro? Uh, I, I had the I have the Pro, so that's what I played it on was the PS4 okay. Pro. Um, you know, I I booted it up and I was sitting there playing it as much as I possibly could, and I remember like at least once every two hours the game would crash. And I was just like, oh man, that sucks. How much progress did I lose? And then go back and continue, you know, or reboot the PS2 and then continue. And all of this, I mean, the game had memory leaks. The game had uh, uh, search parameter uh, errors. It had all kinds of things. Um, It would try to load a file that wasn't there anymore. You know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it was just, they would try to load things too fast. It would it would uh, try to load things and uh, not have enough time to to load them properly. You know, I mean, it's just it was riddled with all kinds of glitches. And uh, like I've I've told you this before, but the the you know I, I know people who had glitches where it was like you know oh I lost my save file or I lost this or uh, you know I lost like four or five hours or something like that. My worst glitch was when I was trying to record gameplay for a uh, YouTube video, and during the recording the game glitched out and I couldn't do anything, so I turned the PS4 off turned it back on and it just beeped and sent an error code and it had wiped out the entire operating system and corrupted the hard drive of the entire PS4. And that's crazy. (laughs) That is absolutely crazy. So I I lost all of my save files for all of my other games. Yeah. (laughs) And do you know what? I don't I don't know if I would have been able to like overcome that because something that was as close as like as similar as I have of, of a story to that would be me going through and trying a hundred percent quantum break near to the yeah. release of the game. And it was just a, a save corruption that I got with that. Oh. And I'm talking like you're going through and you're meticulously picking up every collectible for these achievements. You're going through hard mode, so you're getting slapped about constantly. And then I get like eight hours in, and then it has an issue. Kicks me back to the main menu. I go to boot it up again. Like, okay, it crashed. And then it's just like, no, you don't. You've never played this game in your life. And it's just like... Oh, and that, that took me like a a year to recover from that out of annoyance. So I'm I'm impressed that you had the the mental fortitude to ever forgive it for <clears throat> corrupting an operating system. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> I mean, it it was difficult, but like, did you need like a cooling off period out of curiosity, or did you just get like, took a week off? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, I still had a cooling off period no matter what because I had to reinstall the entire operating system on the PS4. But <laughs> and you did that by yourself, or you just yeah. yeah? No, I did not send that Jesus in. Yeah, Christ. I mean, it's 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 pretty easy. I mean, like most people who who have replaced the hard drives in their systems already know how to do it. You get the USB and all that other nonsense. And, but yeah, I uh, I was just way too deep into it. And absolutely loved it. Um, had a had a friend that ran, you know, the tabletop RPG back in like '96, and uh, I think it was '96. But um, and he he was a masterful storyteller, and like made me fall in love with the world even more so. Um, my only regret is that he actually passed away before the game released. Oh damn! Um, yeah, I know. It was like 
he he passed away like i think about six or eight months before it was uh announced and um it's one of my goals for cyberpunk 2 is to uh, become a playtest volunteer and i know that they usually like pay them or or something like that the only thing i want to do is create uh my friend's npc that was a fixer in the game and just immortalize him in the game that's that's all i want that is awesome, i don't want man. money i don't want money i don't you know i don't want credit i don't want anything else i just want to take a friend who passed away and immortalize him with one of his very famous or well famous amongst me and my friends uh npcs that he used to, to uh run his uh cyberpunk game you know and i don't know uh, I know that you are very deep into the industry and maybe even have a few contacts or something. Uh, oh, no, no, reach... not as deep Nothing? as CDP. Nothing like that? No, no. Uh, okay. No. But like, no, I, was, uh, I was a Ubisoft chill for a very long time, and then they, they dropped Skull and Bones in my lap, and I'm not, I don't think I'm on good terms with them anymore after the, the very late. <laughs> what is this bag? Why does it smell funny, and why is it on fire? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were too happy with my uh, my feedback that I gave them on oh, that. Oh, no. Uh, so. But, I mean, I've tried reaching out to CDPR. I've tried reaching out to Keanu Reeves himself, you know, through his uh, motorcycle company and stuff. Because I figured, you know, he's a, a, a quite a generous uh, enough person that he might speak on on someone's behalf for something that's of this nature. Hmm. Um, but... Nope, I haven't heard anything back. Uh, so, you know, hey, any viewers out there that want to kind of <laughs> help me with this? I mean, I'm like, like I said, I'm, it's not for money. It's not for fame. It's not for anything else. It's just, you know, I have a friend that was really good at running the game, and I want to put him in Cyberpunk 2 or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah. So I've become 2078. We'll get it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the um, subtext stuff, we promise. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess you kind of already touched on the the whole, yeah, the fan of being on the tabletop RPG and how important it was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess ripping the bandaid off the the first reception of the game, um, that we kind of I... touched on. Yeah, and, I and just how so important not, two point was as well. Uh, so I'm not one of those people that goes out and like buys a game immediately. Even though like I am a massive Armored Core fan, I have every single game for Armored Core. Um, That's a lot of I, it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trust me, I know. Um, I mean, just on the PlayStation, there was like what, four releases on the original PlayStation? And then there's, like, oddball things like, oh, yeah, there's a PSP release. And people are like, wait, what? And then, <laughs> and then there's the offshoot games where uh, some of the people left and created a Switch game, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not really related directly to Armored Core, but it was basically, like, you know, something to tide the fans over. But... Yeah, I um, I don't know. I I love cyberpunk as the world just because I have such a strong connection to it. And then I'll get on to like how it helped me a little bit later. But yeah. um, the reception was rough because I. I knew something was up when it was like these huge embargoes over it, and it's like something's yeah, wrong. Here. That's like, always a red flag when it's, these it's companies like, sit on them till day one. Yeah, and and I and I just don't buy games day one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I don't I don't even own the latest Armored Core game. That's the point I was making. Uh, I still haven't gone to p pick it up yet. The um, it's hard as hell. Like, yeah. 
the um the thing was it's like just looking around and watching like uh youtube channels like yong ya and stuff like that where it's like they're only handing out like pre-release stuff on pc it's like okay so that made me think maybe it's not that optimized for uh playstation or uh they're only doing it through their own uh pc company gog yeah. um and they they are trying to control it so it, it might be a control issue As, again me sitting here trying my best to give them the benefit of the doubt but like things were like very restrictive on what you could show what you couldn't show what you could talk about what you couldn't talk about and it's like if the game was really, really good at the beginning, I don't think there would be these restrictions. Exactly. So I was like, okay, yep. something's wrong. And then the game released, and it was out for a little bit, and people purchased it, and then people started refunding it. And they refunded this game. Like, the, the only thing I'd ever seen that was this much of a backlash was uh, the last Batman Arkham game on PC. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, it that ran PC like was yeah. And it's like that, that company with that, with that PC port, they ruined their reputation forever. I know people who just look around and they're going, oh, that company? Nah. Like, but they're giving away gold bars for like <laughs> free. Yeah, I I don't think so. <laughs> They'll just pass. Um, you scratch it and you find it's bronze underneath. I think you'll find guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you, no, you scratch it and you're like, hey, why is this uranium? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> like now, now you've been poisoned. But it's it's um. Yeah it it was way too secretive. It was way too restrictive. Um. When when Sony turned around and said, we're going to start refunding, I was like, oh, no. They were refunding digital purchases and stuff. And because uh, people were claiming that this was a bait and switch. And um, yeah. there are certain states, you know, over here that it doesn't matter what kind of product it is a bait and switch is grounds for a uh, a refund and if they refuse the refund it's like five grand mm -hmm. like here's your fine of five grand oh and we're going to do the refund anyways and we're going to do it in a forceful manner that causes a chargeback which is going to be another 50 bucks and, like so sony realized that there was going to be a huge mistake in that that it was going to be a uh, just this financial tornado of nothing but bad. So they started refunding it. And then we started seeing like a bunch of the copies showing back up in GameStops and stuff. And people were returning like the special editions and stuff, like with the statues and everything. Yeah. Like it was just this wave of unpleasantness that came through and I was just looking at it going, okay, they'll either fix this or they'll never be trusted again. Like this is, that went way beyond like, okay, this failed and they'll just move on. It's like, no, th no, they put way too be... much. Yeah. They put way yeah, too much like, into this game. And it's like, they have to fix this. Their, their reputation is, was like riding on it and they couldn't do anything about it. Um, you know, it's, it was just a really, really rough start. They, I wonder if like, if I was a fly on the wall in some of those meetings, if there weren't people that were just like, well, we own 51% of the shares and we want our profits this quarter, so kick it out. Yep, that was most likely 
one of the main reasons. I think also they they may have underestimated how big of a shift going from like a third person RPG to then making a first person. Like the, yeah. the just even just getting like gameplay mechanics right. And making sure the shooting feels right. That that must have taken a lot of time and a, yeah. a completely new learning process for them. I'm sure they brought in, you know, industry vets to fill in some of these roles, but you're you know, you're talking they, they hadn't really the shooting in, in Witcher was not all that good <laughs> with that with that crossbow. Which, so, Witcher three, I'm I've I've seen people do crossbow builds and I'm just like, Yeah, you you mm-hmm. can do that. You can you know, you, you can also grab a pair of pliers and, and mm. you know, grab all of your teeth and pull them out too. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think they overestimated it. And I don't, I don't know what possessed, like I get like it, there was a massive install base for Xbox one and uh, PS4 and not well, wanting yeah. to leave that behind, but that it well, really yeah, because everyone that. was scared. Yeah. Everyone was scared. Um, you could not like so uh yeah, it was before before the uh the game came out. Uh I have a nephew um that he he wanted an Xbox uh yeah, he wanted an Xbox Series X for Christmas. The target nearby my house had one. His mom was so adamant about trying to get one that four weeks before we even knew one was around, she gave me her credit card information and had me link it to a bunch of my like shopping accounts and stuff. And I went and got it. Like I got super lucky and I got, I got one, you know, my target nearby had, had like six in stock. I hit it. I let, you know, I let my uh, my sister in law know that hey, you know, you're going to see a charge on your account, uh, mm-hmm. but I but I've secured one. I'm going to go pick it up. I didn't even get back to my truck from, and, and I was like a hundred feet, a hundred feet feet from the door to my truck. Three people offered me twice what I paid for it. It's crazy. To Before me. I even I heard got so into many truck. stories of these, and it just baffles me. Like it's and it, it was outrageous, and that's that was what they were fighting. That's what they were worried about because it was like, yeah, all of the systems are selling, but they're selling to people who have, you know, thirty of them in their garage, and they're just <laughs> reselling them to these to these gamers and stuff. And it was like. You know, yes, eventually the game, the systems are getting there, but the install base was not nearly what what anyone wanted, and uh, that's like that's what I'm kind of interested in seeing in the next generation. It's like, how are these companies going to control for that? Because yeah. it's not it's not Sony thinking, oh well, it's a it's a responsibility to our customers. It's, no, no, forget your customers. You need to have this as a responsibility to to the game developers. Your install base is a responsibility and a promise to them, because if you can't keep that promise, they're not going to develop for your system. Hmm. But again, that's another tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can make a, a separate video about that with me yeah. and Brandon later. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> always, but, uh, always digging for content. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I uh, that's that that was one of the things that really hurt it was like being stuck on the PlayStation Four. I think they really did uh, push the engine. I think they originally developed for 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 ninth generation, and and then they had to peel the onion back to yeah. to like force it on onto eighth and stuff. And it was like a no, man. absolutely, because I I remember. It can't have been that long into the game. Like the the opening, like when you do the the heist thing, and then you're, yeah. you're driving away in the car, 
Oh my god, I I had it originally purchased on a on a One X. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I could not beat that that specific portion when you're leaning out the the car window with the gun. Oh, I just no. couldn't. It it was literally like two frames. It was like me playing two worlds on on the three sixty. Like it just, <laughs> oh, man. it was woeful. And I was sitting there, and I was like, and that was. When I knew, I, I said, "Then I'm I'm not touching this game until I get a Series X." Like it's just, it's unplayable. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you've ripped me out of this impactful story it's, moment that I was really yeah. invested in. <laughs> yeah, it's just so. <clears throat> there were so many times where it was very immersion breaking. Um, for. But I mean, like any crash on any game is going to be immersion breaking. Any time when you drop to like sub sub thirty frames per second, you're just like, oh man, it's like <clears throat> it's like what what am I watching here? A child with a flip book, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and it's but two point zero came out and everything got fixed, including like all of the broken builds. And stuff because mm. holy crap, holy crap at the builds that were broken, like all of the infinite money things you could do, and uh, the the weapons that you could just walk up and do like four thousand points worth of damage to the yeah. back of somebody's head. <laughs> it's like, like, well, that's useless because like once you go past six hundred, they're just dead anyways. Like you're just doing it for the lulls now to see. How broken you can make this, and oh boy, yeah. yeah, you you could make things so broken. But uh, but it, it, know, it's let's... it's good that two point released and it released well. Oh yeah. Um, if they would have botched that release, oh my god, the they wouldn't have recovered. Uh, I don't think anybody would be giving them another chance if, if they dropped 2.0 and it was met with the same level of, of bugs. Because I remember if, seeing when it dropped, people were trying to find any excuse to shit on it. And they were just nitpicking and being like, see, there's still bugs, guys. This And it's just like, alright, you guys, like this this is fine to have combing it, right? They fixed most of it. Yeah, it's it, it, if if 2.0 had landed as horribly as 1.0, I think we would be reading articles about the new company that's running that's going to be doing Witcher 4. <laughs> like, because I, I they they could have just lost the IP they and probably maybe dissolved. But yeah, but thankfully it didn't. And and yep. like no, 2.0 was good. It. 2.1 was really good. Uh, is it 2.2, 2.21? Like all of this stuff has been uh, highly approved. Mm. <laughs> they've, no, absolutely. they've they've taken away all of my broken builds, and I'm not I'm not here to cry about it. I'm actually happy with like some of the changes. I'm happy with uh, you know having limitations on how much cyberware you can run. You know. Uh, all this other stuff that's mechanically not perfect, like like the t tabletop RPG. But you know, I, I realize that you can't do that. You have to you have to give them some allowances mm. for them to fit inside of you know what they can and can't do. But yeah, um, yep. I guess we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, um, just wanted to touch on. Uh, just how well, like, as bad as the game was on, like, a technical standpoint, the thing that always stood out to me, and I think what resonated with people and why people wanted to give it a chance so much, is how well-crafted the world is. Like, it is incredibly well-crafted, and not only that, the, the, the choices that you get are so heavy and impactful. And how did you feel yeah. about that? Um. I mean, I knew they were going to hit the, the world out of the park because, like, the concept art that they had from the tabletop RPG and stuff, and, like, you see the vehicles, you see the guns, you see the, the way people dress and stuff, 
And there's so much of that available that you kind of like learn the style. And that's what they did was like, they didn't, <clears throat> they didn't copy it. They mm. didn't like, I mean, yes, they did copy a few things. There's a few things that are direct, like, you know, Hey, this is, you can find this in one of the books kind of thing. Yeah. But they, they took all of it and they were like, they, they, they crafted it in their, <clears throat> their own way with all of the inspirations and stuff. And honestly, the, uh, the world is a work of art. Um, the, the colors are correct. The shapes are correct. The, the, the new age tech that is slightly run down yeah. is, is correct. Um, yeah. you know, uh, night city is literally its own character in the game. Um, you know, they, they understood that, uh, looking at the source material that, uh, making it just a they, they couldn't just make it a backdrop it's not it is a living no, it's the and breathing yeah. yeah it's a living breathing organism that you are surviving inside of um mm. you know they they wanted to make it alive and stuff and jackie you know your care the the your character's best friend is your vehicle to actually like for the for the uninitiated to be able to be introduced to the world to be shown how things work and stuff and um and how how beautiful night city is and also uh you know night city turns around and you know tries to to hit you you know um i mean it hits you at an emotional level and uh you know but it still tries to connect with you in some way and it's like you know they they, they did a great job of letting you know that the place is beautiful fun and dangerous if you're not careful. Yeah, no, the with what you said about you're, you're surviving in the city, that is how every, almost every interaction with people when you're doing quests and stuff, even the more morally gray area, but you can just see that everybody's just literally just trying to get through to the next day. Yeah. And it, it's just business, a lot of it. And obviously you play as a mercenary, so you're doing a lot of these dirtier jobs. And yeah. yeah, the 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 thing that I liked a lot was the fact that they pulled inspiration from uh, Dragon Age Origins as well with mm -hmm. the the free starting paths. And yeah, that's... I don't know why. Like, I get they they sometimes get a little bit of a bad rap. These these kind of origin systems because you know it's it's a sliver of the game and then it just you you then re meet with all the paths and stuff like that. But I, I do like that little you know hour where you have your own set course and you're able to you know craft that origin of the character as it as it should be. But but you also get different uh, dialogue options. Mm. Yeah. So like if you're a corpo. You know, you get to do corpo responses every once in a while, um, and that that goes was, all what, the way up to the to yeah. the DLC. Like I was, yeah. I was still using Street Kid answers. Is you that know, your favorite? Yeah, one hundred and twenty hours in. Like the the origin still has an impact, and that's. I don't think any other games really double down that hard. Really. Yeah, I. Uh... Street Kid was really good. It's uh, my second favorite. My absolute favorite is Nomad. Yeah. I mean, just... This is a really strong like, start. And then Corpo is kind oh of just vanilla. <laughs> it's just well, like, I mean, Corpo is I, like, I expect, okay, this is... Yeah, I expect it's, this. <laughs> it's, it's very... Stereotypical. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far to say is that it's trite. Mm. Um, but it, it is very stereotypical where it's like, oh, you're a corpo person and you get betrayed. Oh, who saw that coming? It's because like every day half of the corpo people get betrayed. It's just whether or not you can, you know, hang on long enough to to get back. But yeah, it's you know, you're 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 just a piranha in a pool of other piranha. Mm. <laughs> you know? no, absolutely. Like, but yeah, no, Nomad was was my favorite just because of like kind of down to earth and stuff. 
Um, and uh, Street Kid was very much like, you know, someone in the know, someone who was used to all of this and yeah. a little bit on the jaded side by, by it. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that's all I wanted to really touch on. Well, also, you know, giving it a lot of credit of how well it allowed you to seamlessly get, you know, immersed into the world as well. Like them, yeah. them origins really, <clears throat> really helped in setting the foundation for you to take that step into the into the rest of the game. Well, I mean, what it did was it allowed the player to connect to whatever they were creating. And that's, so character creators are twofold. Um, you spend a bunch of time making a character and getting all the stats the way you want them and getting the look the right way and stuff like that. But subconsciously, the player is connecting to their character during that whole process. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually a psychology trick. Um, it is to help draw you into the world that much more. Because, you know, you spent two hours making V look exactly the way you wanted him or her to look. And it's like, you know, you just go through and if you're that meticulous and you have like, no, I want to start with a body four because I need more hit points to survive or I need this or, you know. Yeah, it's it's just helping you connect more. And then you get, you get introduced to Jackie and he like takes you by the hand and says, okay, I'm going to lead you down this path and everything. And then suddenly, you know, night city turns around and says, Oh, by the way, I'm really cruel. And like slaps down. Yep, this will be, this will like, be the, this will be the perfect time to insert in, you know, Spoilers, yeah. of course, we're, we're going to be off the cuffing it and, you know, talking completely open. So, yeah, yeah, obviously, as you said, Jackie gets hit with a really, really big reality check. And yeah, and you it's... as the player also get hit with that as, you know, he ends up kicking the bucket in a, in a very, very rough I, I, manner. Yeah, a rough manner and in a way where it's like, you know, you you want to take you the whole point is you're taking on these corporations and stuff and everything seems to be just going well enough during the heist and you're like, Oh, there's a few hiccups here and a few wobbles, but you know, we're still getting through it. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna be fine and then it's just like nope. Yep. And nope. then the the house of cards comes crashing down and it's like, oh, this was not planned well enough at all. No. And it's you like, no one can plan for holes. this. Yeah. You start seeing the holes and then you start seeing the people who, you know, you, you and, thought you kind of trusted <clears throat> and then realize that everybody in the city has an ulterior motive. There's yeah. always. And that's, that's such a great thing is like, I love the fact that everyone has a motivation. Um, and they stay true to that motivation throughout the entire game. Mm -hmm. But like in the tabletop RPG, if me and my friends were playing and we botched a job that bad, yeah, that's a party wipe. We're all dead. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just, it's just a matter of time. Like someone might, you know, get away and run to Brazil or something like that. But eventually, I mean, they're called mega corps for a reason. You know, they're, they're, they're going to come and find you and you're going to be dead. You know, there's nothing. There, eventually, there is nothing you can do if you botch a job bad enough. Yep. And that's that's what they did. And they, and it was a party wipe. It's just there was extenuating circumstances. <laughs> yeah, the obviously major plot is the yeah the relic. Yeah, that you stupidly decide to jam inside yourself. <laughs> nope, wouldn't have made that choice. I would have never. I would have been like, well, this is a botch job. You know, like, sorry, we're not going to make any money. I'm going to go yeah. hide somewhere and hope go, that they can't find me. I'll go do some side gigs instead, guys. You know, there's a yeah. lot of money in that business. Yeah, it, yeah it's crazy, um, crazy plot. And yeah, just 
just gut wrenching. Yeah. Uh, that Jackie lost, and oh, the only God. problem I had with it is it really. I I know that obviously it's one of the these type of stories where he needs to be. That that outcome has to happen to drive V forward and you know push him, but it, it did feel a a little bit rushed. I don't think he got as much screen time as as he deserved as a character. Really, I think it would have been better if if uh, imagine if they had turned around and CDPR said, "Hey, we're going to release another DLC, and this DLC is going to be the early days with Jackie and mm -hmm. and V." And that's what where I was you get to play, yeah. you get to play through all of that flash forward sequence and stuff, mm. and have fun doing that. But it would they would have limited you, and it's like, oh, you can't get this. You don't. You're not earning a lot of jobs. You're only earning enough money to like pay rent and stuff, and 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 like buy your car and stuff like that. And, you know, so it would have been very very limiting on what you could and couldn't do. Your street cred level would have been limited, capped soft capped at a certain yeah amount. have limit yeah have you know, limiters that, and caps yeah and that'd be a lot more like yeah. you said and you would have gotten a lot more connected with jackie yep. now in some cases that some people would think that was a good thing and they'd be like oh yeah it would make it it would make uh jackie's death more impactful here's here's the other side of that coin what if it was too impactful like suddenly it's like Jack, you know, you, you've spent a good 30 hours palling around with Jackie in missions and stuff. And then he dies like that. And it's like, it's just suddenly heart wrenching and you have to like set the controller down and walk away for like a day or two. Like that's, yeah. I don't think CDPR was looking to, to hit people. They're, they're looking to hit people hard but hard enough to where they can like feel it and then recover. Mm -hmm. And like, that's, that's the thing is like, you can't hit people too hard. It's, you know, it's, it's not like an honor Harrington novel where it's like, you, you know, you spend the first 500 pages, you know, with, you know, paired up with a character and then suddenly boom, dead. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, we were 500 pages in and this isn't the main character. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I think all of the characters added to the experience. Um, uh, they were more just that they, they were more than just like, uh, surface interactions, um, which a lot of the RPGs are very guilty of where it's like, you know, Hey, I say my script and blah, 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 you know, um, you know, it, it's it's more than just like trying to placate play a player's need to interact for an interactive world. Uh, each, each of them, they have their core motivations uh, that you could reference. I mean, you could see their their mo motivations referenced in every action that they took. Yep. Like, you know, Judy just wanted to make enough money to be happy. She didn't get greedy. Evelyn got greedy because she yeah. wanted more money and to be able to get out and change her life. Judy was not really looking to change her life. So, I mean, you see that interaction between them when you're just standing by and like watching them talk, you know, and, and like Judy doesn't take the risks. Evelyn did take the risks. Um, you know, uh, and like e even like the 2.1 interactions where it's like oh you've killed too much of this particular street gang and now they're hunting you mm. in cars and stuff yeah. like you know their motivation is very simplistic it is revenge and stuff but it's still there there's still a motivation no it, it um, adds it adds further to the world and the immersion of it because also with that 2.0 release it was like an overhauling of the police as well yeah you used to and, be able to commit crime and then it, it didn't really feel okay. like it would react or uh, it, it would react in a completely baffling way where you you'd kill you know get into a fight or whatever you may hit a stray civilian then all of a sudden you turn around and the the, the they're just there they just appear yeah 
And it's just like, like okay, that's kind of <laughs> jarring. <laughs> so I know um, it's the future, but I don't think they have teleportation just yet, guys. No, no yeah. <laughs> but like, so some of some of the uh, motivations for people are deeper and and more developed than others. But honestly, in reality. Uh, the same can be said about everyday real people in our world. You know, it's like, you know, some motivations are deep. Some motivations are not that deep. <laughs> um, and and that range is also represented in the game. Like, and that's the thing I love about, like, multiple playthroughs with V. Like, I've had games where it's like, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do the right thing. And then I had I had games where I played and it was like, all I want to do is live. That's my main motivation on this playthrough is all I want to do is live at any cost. Mm. And you can do that. Yeah. And that cost is pretty heavy because you've, you've seen that ending. You've yep. seen all four of the DLC endings. Yep. And it's like... Absolutely. That that living at any cost is like, oh God, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> uh, I, you um you put in the it's Discord so that you that you that you was like Jesus Christ these endings. <laughs> these. <laughs> yeah, they're just so rough. It's like there there out there is one ending where it's like. Okay, that's that's a little bit uplifting and kind of nice and stuff, and and you 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 know you do the good things, you get the good karma, you know that kind of stuff, and it's like oh, and by the way, you know the the good ending is is not your easy way to continue living, mm. and it's like oh, man, like yeah. so even though you've done everything right and you, you've been a good boy, you don't get the reward. And it's like you, you literally have to like steal life from two other people mm. to live. And it's like, oh, it's like I was kind of okay with a one to one ratio <laughs> because it's like, because it's like, well, Johnny, this isn't really you technically, um, yeah. and 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 you've already lived your life, but you know that that whole two for one, I was like, oh man. And then, and then your quality of life is so poor after mm. that. It's like, oh God, no! So it's like everything's changed, and yeah, it, it's all four endings are worth playing through. It's just like, which one do you want to be your permanent ending from from uh, from Phantom Liberty? Yeah, so that's interesting. I wanted to. Uh have a stab and see out of the base game endings which one was your like quote unquote canon ending my canon ending in the base is giving up my body to Johnny and letting him live on because me because me holding on to it's going to do nothing like even like because all of the mental pathways and stuff have already started changing and nothing can be done like, so what? What are you gonna do? Condemn J Johnny to death and condemn yourself to death as well, or, you know, do you let Johnny, who's on a redemption arc, like, fully redeem himself? And mm -hmm. that's really gratifying to see. Is like, you see Johnny start off, and like, I mean, he wants to kill you. And yeah. he doesn't understand that that he's in your body. So like he's trying to kill you, and then it's like, oh wait. And then he starts slowly like seeing all of the outcomes of his actions from the past come to light. And he's like starting to look things at a, in a different light and seeing how uh you don't have to be a rebel. You don't have to blow buildings up to make change sometimes a little change is good enough. Mm. And he just starts doing this incremental change to, uh, you know, this whole redemption and stuff. And you start seeing some of his regrets and stuff like that. And that's, that's what I really liked was like seeing all of that. And then towards the end where it's like, suddenly Johnny has taken over your body 
and it's the you know the post the post ending scene where like he's giving giving away a guitar and he's like he's like I can't do anything else good here in Night City. I've hurt too many people here. And yeah. he leaves. It's like that's that was my my canon ending was like Johnny gets the body, you move on. Uh although it is possible that um you know that you're still alive in cyberspace uh, beyond the black wall wall. Although I'm not exactly sure how well that's going to work out (laughs) trying to, trying to be a human living in an AI world beyond the black walls. Eh, uh, I don't Mm. know. Like, is this even possible? You know, cause yeah, cause they kind of flirt with that in the DLC bringing back the black wall is a major you know, unveiling as to what they're messing with. Oh, man. And it's just like, <clears throat> that oh, is... you really should just be leaving this alone, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. It is It is so much worse than Pandora's box. Like, all of the things inside of Pandora's box are not great for humanity, but they're not actively looking to dissect every mind in the world, which is what's beyond the black wall. Like, cause the AIs are just like, uh, we're not getting any new information. We're kind of bored. And then they see a little cockroach crawl beyond the wall and they're like, Ooh, neat. And they grab it and they pull it apart immediately. And they're like, Oh, it died. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> we'll look at that. <laughs> you know? And it's like, and they start like poking at the wall. Like, how did it get through? You know, kind of thing. Like, can we mm-hmm. get through? And <clears throat> The analogy is like everyone thinks the black wall is this great huge wall and it's like you know oh we're on one side and they're on the other it's not it's not this huge long wall it's a circle mm. and all of humanity is on the inside and everything nasty is on the outside yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's very worrying um for me i think because i was obviously doing each of the endings I think it would be either a toss up between like siding with like Takamura and doing that whole path. Um or just just leaving with Pan Am. Oh yeah, that's a because it was it was just oh, like Pan Am. <laughs> yeah. It was <clears throat> it just with it what we talked right. about every, everything <clears throat> just feels so damn gloomy and just so depressing and it was just like maybe he get, like I know he's not going to live very long and stuff but at least he gets like a sliver of time with, with these people who he's like resonated with and who yeah. I had sided with and stuff and done loads of stuff with with them found them incredibly interesting as characters and even just as a set like you have that whole the, the suffocation of the city and then just outside in the desert, there's these people who are just like, yeah, we don't really give a shit what they're doing in there. We, we just kind of yeah. like, we kind of hit their trucks like every we, now and then to get <laughs> supplies. Yeah, we, and... we take their money and their food. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, it was, it was leaving because it just felt like there was a, a tiny bit of like happiness that he could get before everything yeah. else would just come in and come crashing down. Yeah, that was that was my my f- second favorite ending was <clears throat> riding off into the sunset with Pan Am because well I mean you know look at her ooh yeah no, my, <laughs> my romance mm. interest Mm-mm. yep <laughs> you know yeah it's uh, ooh mm. <laughs> um but yeah the just some just some characters I wanted to like shed a little bit more light to like I said like Takamura what a character oh yeah you meet this guy and he's just so cold and just really really driven to try and find out what the hell happened yeah like what what on earth went wrong it's just that that huge amount of loyalty Mm. like 
you can't if 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 people and companies in the real world could fashion that amount of loyalty and stuff in people like you know, imagine like having an army of takamoras at your <laughs> side like just like with that level of loyalty to you it's just like i can do anything mm. you know <clears throat> and yeah. yeah that was his thing was like his his honor his loyalty his uh i mean he was so determined to set things right in his mind that uh, you had to admire him for it. No, absolutely. And obviously, as I said earlier, the, the spoiler cufflinks are off. Um, they did a really interesting thing with him later on in the story, which I don't know if they changed it in the later patches, where the like the hotel thing starts burning down, and your yeah. only objective is to leave. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't mark him to be interacted with at all. So you just like, okay, well, I'll leave and, you know, I can. And if you do that, he dies. Yeah. Or you can do a completely optional thing of your own accord and just be like, hold on a second. You know, he's hit, he's in here still somewhere. I need to go look for him and help him. You know, we're, we're partners at the end of the day. So and if, if you, if you take enough time to like look around and try to like orient yourself, You'll have the internal monologue or internal dialogue with Johnny about about Takamura. Johnny's like, "Oh yeah, he's, you know, well, he's dead. Fuck him. Let's go." And and uh, and V fires back with, uh, "You know, hey, no, this is this is uh, someone who's been with us. Um, he's, you know, helped us quite a bit, and I'm not going to abandon him." So it's like, you know. You know, it's, it's, it's the two wolves. There's the white wolf and, and the black wolf. And it's like, which one do you feed mm. at that point in time? You know, so, I mean, it, it, it didn't do anything like on the nose as like a, uh, a quest thing that like pops up in the upper right hand corner and stuff. But, uh, you know. Just having you piece uh, that together as the player was, was nice though. Not having a quest yeah. marker and just it. It fed into the. Oh, I figured that out myself. Yeah, they weren't afraid to be like you know, because it's not just a minor thing. Like he, he influences an ending. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. You you, <clears throat> you don't put him on the quest log thing, and it's you figure it out, and you you're rewarded immensely yeah. for doing that. And that that yeah, I think they deserve a lot of credit for that. It was really good. Oh man. Um, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> I was really shocked with like some of the the different choices in the DLC for for things because it was like, I mean, they shoehorned in a survival horror stage. Oh, I was hoping <clears throat> you'd wait until later to that. Re I really <laughs> didn't like that. That oh really, no! No, I really, really just didn't. I hate them types of games for me. Oh no! Um, <laughs> I've never been able to get into like stuff like amnesia and stuff. Like when okay. I'm not, when I'm just hiding or running away, it just irritates me. It really, really does. Yeah. Um I need a, I need like a combat mechanic. Like even with, with like what Resident Evil. Um, Seven did, where yeah, you know J Jack Baker's invincible, but I can at least feel like I'm doing so. Even if I just knock him on his on his knee, just to give me that little bit of breathing room, like that's enough for me, and I can I can be like, okay, yeah, I, I'm 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 on board with this. I mean, ah, that that AI is a <laughs> fucking menace. <laughs> like, <laughs> that killed me, so, and it may have been because I was trying to push through. To get through the endings, to have it ready for this this video, but like I was, I think I was just making mistakes and just trying to do things way, way too quickly, and I was just getting punished. 
and it's yeah. it's so brutal and i guess it kind of it needed to be that way because this is the most dangerous thing available in that universe like that's literally something yeah. from the black wall like yeah and it is just relentless it's just <clears throat> yeah ticks my ass so oh yeah yes yeah. <laughs> oh yeah i i i mean i was doing the same thing when i first you know saw it like um so a point of reference is uh, the first Zone of the Enders game. Um, when the Anubis showed up, I was like, oh, cool. And I was really good at the combat. So I was just zipping around and like slamming him into the wall constantly. And I was like, man, I, I can't beat him. And I was talking again to my friend Sinchatis about it and like complaining to him. I was like, I, I can't seem to beat Anubis. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's like, he kicks your ass. It's like, no, you just slam him against the wall a bunch of times, and you know it's a human pilot in a in a big mech. So like, you slam it against the wall, and the little tiny human brain inside of the human's body shakes around, and he gets stunned. And he just like looked at me like just completely with his mouth wide open. He's like, "You're doing what?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm taking it to him. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill him." And he was like, "You're not supposed to do that. He actually has infinite hit points." I'm like, "Oh." Damn it! And I was—I I attacked this situation, Cyberpunk, the same way. I was like, "I'm level fifty. This thing is nothing. I have—I have taken on everything except for Max yeah. Tack. <laughs> 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 Um because they cheat. Uh, <laughs> but like, I, I've taken on everything. I've—I've I've killed Cyber Psychos. It does not matter. I've—I've I've done it all." Uh, you know, I can hack something and then pull out the pistols and drill it in the head a couple of times, and it, this is going to be done. This is going to be over. This is going to be a cakewalk. And then it was just like, it was just like, oh, I can't hack it. Oh, it's like not taking any damage when I shoot it, like in in the little red area. And so, mm. oh, this is oh, dead. <laughs> yep. The <laughs> moment like, oh, you aggro no. it, it, it just it it's instant. It will like teleport and the, just yeah, and it's just like oh Jesus guy. And the 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 number of times where I like got prepped and I was like, okay, I'm over at the door, and I open the door and I start shooting the things I'm supposed to be shooting, and here comes the thing and it gets down and I turn around to walk out the door and the door has slammed shut again. Yeah, oh I'm like, my uh oh god, yeah. And then it and then you like open it again and it slams shut again and locks and you're like, oh no, and you're having to like pry it open then the next thing you see is that four pronged arm coming through your chest and you're looking down going well that's not good yep that's not supposed to be the <laughs> can you help me like, open the door at least jesus christ it's like, it's like oh i'm dead yeah i uh i i quickly started like swapping to grenades and stuff uh during those situations because it was like i need i need to destroy these things very fast and i don't need to be here when it happens hmm. so i was like yeah i'm just gonna do it with grenades or hacking you know or anything like that like just oh my gosh but like i even i even tried to uh use a sand deviston to like slow time down so that i could get away faster no nope, he turns it off the oh. ai turns off your sand deviston yeah i mean it makes sense so it like, makes sense <laughs> but that is brutal <laughs> It's like my one advantage that I was going to use is just worthless now. I'm gonna die. I'm really gonna die. <laughs> and you have to like hide and like I mean they 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 do a great job of like pressing the stress onto the player. Mm. Cause like I'm like hopping around on the couch and stuff like oh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um I guess this can tangent over to the combat system, though. Yeah. Yep. Um, really, really strong when it was working in in the yeah. original patches. Um, I, I did like the the range of stuff, but it, it did feel like something was missing at times. Um, I don't know if you felt the same way. Um, in the in a way of like balancing and get, just making sure everything oh, fits in the correct spots and stuff like that. Balancing, uh, no, yeah. like me. So so, 
my friend Sinjatis came up with this with this one particular play style um, where he would sit back with the Widowmaker and and like do the epic ping back when you could like do it and it would ping everything. Mm. And he'd sit back and just like charge the thing up and boom, well, that person's dead. <laughs> boom, that person's dead. And he'd be standing outside of a building doing it. Um, and then he would run like back, uh, was it pre 2.0, his build was uh, epic ping, um, epic shock, and epic contagion. Hmm. And like, you know, he's in the, the building at that point. <laughs> no, no, he just is like, okay, I'm going to ping. All right, now I'm going to uh, now I'm going to do this like epic contagion that can crit. Oh, and when it crits, the epic shock goes off as well, and it's just boom, boom, boom. Like just everything falls over dead, and you just walk through the building, picking up all of the loot and everything, and like you know, everything's dead. Like it's fine. They were never alerted. They de- they never went to uh to the alarms or anything like that. And I'm very very thankful that that they they nerfed both that build because it was just like way too overpowered um you couldn't i mean you could just break the game like yeah. it was just like nothing nothing stood in your way you could just run around and just destroy everything um now was i expecting them to do things like let you set up traps like aloy and stuff no no absolutely not like that's just not the way this city works or anything um, I do think like high intelligence and high tech builds for characters was a little too overpowered. You, you dip a little bit in the body because you want to have the regeneration of hit points in combat and stuff. Yep. Um, you know, you dip a little bit into, into the, uh, the cool, um, uh, branch so that you can, do additional crit damage and stuff and like i mean all this other but like to this day i walk around with a cyber deck and a silence pistol and that's usually how i kill people in the game um Mm -hmm. it's just it fits my style i know that there's tons of people out there that are doing the whole like you know sand deviston and they pull out the katana and all this stuff and they're doing all this neat stuff and that's great that's wonderful and it works as long as you can get everything set up before the sand Deviston turns off, mm-hmm. I have more sustainability. I can, I can stay in combat for hours, like literal real world hours and still be okay. And that's, that's what I went for. Um, I think, uh, I think I'm much more efficient in that. Um, although like, you know, again, it's just play, play to whatever you feel like. And that's the, what the what the game does beautifully is you can play however you like you can kill however you like um, I'm like I'm doing I'm doing a uh, a very hard run from the beginning right now just just because I can and and stuff mm-hmm. and that first mission where you're rescuing uh, Sandra Dorset um, I stealthed it the entire way just to see if I could. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, run up, crack their neck, run up to the next guy, crack his neck, sneak around, run up to this guy, crack his neck. And I didn't sh- fire a single shot. I got in behind a- absolutely everybody and just stealth killed all of them because I knew that I was underpowered. I didn't have high enough levels to really do anything. I, I had crappy guns. I didn't have any cyberware. You weren't, you're not allowed to buy any before that mission. And yep. stuff. So I was like, I can get shot and screwed up here bad, and it's not going to be pretty. And I don't <laughs> want to do this mission a million times. I just want to go ahead and get to the fun stuff. Yeah, you want to so get to I, the goodies. I, yeah. So that's how I did it. Was just stealthing through, and like any game where where combat is fun, but it's one hundred percent optional in a lot of the cases is great. Yeah. Like they, they, the, the passion was there. The, the versatility is there. If you want to just sit back and be a hacker with a sniper rifle, go for it. If you want to be, you know, the in the face, in your face berserker with a hammer, you can do that too. Like if 
they don't limit you on on how you want to play and um you know just it's perfect you can you can craft your own uh combat style in the game and you're it's left up to the player's imagination yeah i was dipping um, in and out of loads of stuff cuz i never stuck to one thing um went from doing like you were saying the stealthing around in the beginning to then finding like a katana for the first time and be like oh this is kind of cool yeah. and going down that route and then <clears throat> Double barrel shotgun you find kicks ass. <laughs> and then uh, I stumbled I mean, upon like smart weapons and it's like, holy shit, there's there's so much like layers oh, yeah. to these weapons. Yeah. And and smart weapons are a direct copy from the tabletop RPG, which is just so much it's so great. Um I kind of wish there was like some of the the uh <clears throat> more versatility with sneaking up on people. Like they could have just added a little bit more animation where it's like you sneak up behind someone and you have a hammer in your hand and you put the handle around their neck and crack or, <laughs> or you get the monofilament whip and you just loop it over their head and snick and the head just comes off or the katana where you slit their throat and they fall yep. down or, or the knife doing the same thing. The, the whole like, all of your weapons go away and you just crack their neck. It's, okay, yeah, so I get two it. animations. Hey. It's either crack the neck mm. doing that or doing it yeah. in the underarm. <laughs> so. Yeah, and it's like, I wish they had added the extra animations for specific weapons that you had. Um, or if you're going to knock someone out, you just pop them with the butt of the pistol or something or the butt of the rifle. Mm. You know, they could have They could have added that. And I know why they didn't because they were just so behind on everything yeah. and on fixing things. So, like, I kind of give them a pass on that, but, you know, uh, like, in a, maybe in, in 2.0. Yeah, in a, in a sequel, <laughs> yeah. at least, hopefully, then. Because yeah, it yeah, just, didn't just, make it. Just these... a little bit of extra polish there yeah. would, be, would be much appreciated. Um, but, yeah, the... I love the combat system. I love, like, the time slowing down and stuff. And I really wish that they had kept their promise with the multiplayer, but it's like, how do you do that with hacking and the Sandevistan system in place? Yeah, you've seen so many games. With all the time dilation stuff, it's like uh, promising can't... stuff like that. Yeah, like Fallout, for instance, didn't <clears throat> crack at that with like the VAT system in 76, and it just didn't. Having that in a yeah. multiplayer setting really didn't feel right. Along yeah, with can't... a lot of other things in that game not feeling right. Yeah, it's just thing. like, <laughs> yeah, it again, it's just a combat system where you, you, you craft what you want and you just have everything that you could possibly want. Yep. Now yeah. I'm flipping to my other page, the other <laughs> side of the page for notes. Uh, we've, gotten, we've gotten through most of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have plenty to talk about. Um, well, let's touch on the, the length of the game for you. You've obviously put in uh, quite, quite a lot of time. And, <laughs> it was uh, like close was, to 2,000 hours. <laughs> yeah, and I was wondering if... Um, how, how did you feel about the length? Was it long enough for you, or would you have wanted more? Or did you feel like they, they did the story justice in the amount of time that they, they did it in? So, so uh, to be a little cheesy... Um, I always love the quote of uh, or the saying that's like all who want not all who wonder are lost, um, and that's that's how I play games like this and Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima and The Witcher and stuff like that, where it's like <clears throat> I will kind of like concentrate on the on the storyline a little bit. But if something else where it's like, ooh, shiny, I'll just like, <laughs> I'll follow that. And it's like, this, this is kind of fun. This is fun over here. I'll do this. You know, I, I did the same thing in Sleeping Dogs where it was just like, mm. I did, you know, did I go out with the, with the original idea of doing every side quest? No, no, I just did side quest as they appeared in front of me as I wanted to do them. It was a more natural progression. Now that's the, the speed the best, runners, That's the best way as well. 
is when a game is able to craft it in that way, where it doesn't feel yeah. like a chore. Now, now the speedrunners, yeah, they can they can crank the game in fifteen hours, I think, right? Yeah, and it's like I I kind of wish that the main story, like if you were just going to crank the main story all the way through, um, that that it was around twenty five to thirty hours. I, I think they could have put a little bit more meat there, mm-hmm. but again with all of the side quests and stuff, uh, the players are allowed to customize the length of their game to their liking. Um, you know, uh, but I mean, at the, at the risk of sounding gluttonous, I want more. <laughs> uh, I want more randomly procedurally generated uh, missions that are essentially forever. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and we kind of have that. We have that with the drop shipment and we have that with the car theft stuff from the DLC. But You'd like want something a little bit more meaty than that. It it misses the mark on the original intent of the tabletop RPG. Megacorps hire runners to steal from each other mm. all the time. Like most of the missions in the tabletop RPG are about you know you getting hired by Arasaka to go over and fuck over Militech and steal their shit or even just break it. You know, like because these mecha corps are like, oh, we'll pay you tons of money. Why? Because we'll earn a hundred times what we're going to pay you if we get this contract and you fuck them out of this contract. No. Because they're, and again, it's even though megacorps are not like people, they still have their motivation. Now, their motivation is money yeah. and, 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 and <laughs> control easy. and power. Yep. It, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a very short list. But I kind of, I, I think they missed the mark there where it's like there should be more corporate espionage between, between all. And, and there is a little bit with the main story and stuff, but it's like, you know, steal a shipment of this part. Well, why? Because it's going to put them eight months behind on this project. And if they're eight months behind on this project, we're going to get the contract and they're not going to get the contract. Mm. I mean, not, not, a not a, you know, billions of layers deep plot or anything like that. It's, but it is true to the world. Mm. And, uh, I, I just, Maybe I'm hoping that, you know, even though CDPR has said we're done with this, we're not, we're not going to do anymore. I mean, they've said that before. They, they said that, that before. It. Yeah. I was about to yeah. Say. It was like, they said it before and it's like, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that now that I've put it out there in the ether that they'll <laughs> look around and go, yeah, that is one of the major story points like for the world is all of this corporate espionage where you break into a building and you steal something and you leave and stuff. And it's like, it's not a hard mission premise to do. You could just make it where it's like you walk through this building and it creates a whole new instance of like this randomly procedurally generated, um, you know, map and you have to go fetch the glowy thingy and then escape. (laughs) I mean, you're you're doing that for um, you're you're doing that in uh, a couple of missions already. It's just you have to just keep doing it over and over and over again, and just randomly generate it. And you can even go so far as to make it like two or three stories of a building or something. Mm. But like, so yeah, I'm I'm gluttonous. I want more. Um, yeah, it that kind of reminds me. Did you play Day Sex Mankind Divide? No. You no. didn't. Oh my goodness! You I, no, a big I did, cyberpunk no. fan, and you missed. I know, I know. Um, wow. I, I played. I played City of Heroes, and okay. that's where I'm kind of pulling this whole like random weird missions kind of thing because they have missions where you run into a building and you defeat waves and waves and waves of of enemies and stuff. And um, I mean, they could straight up steal that from from them because yep. it's. It's just a concept, and it's a very basic concept. Yeah, because it's something Mankind Divided did. They did a, um, a thing called Breach Mode. Obviously, they have their own um, version it, yeah. of like the, the net and stuff like that. And what that is, is 
you have these net runners and they they were just these levels of challenges and stuff and you would just but it's very very basic but yeah. it was it, it was enjoyable at the same time but i don't know how well it was received because i don't think it i think it launched with the game but in a very small amount and then they added more and more but very few I people kind of... touched it I, I kind of wish that they had actually expanded on. So, so V is not a very good net runner. Um, he's mm-hmm. just not. The, the, like he can do some of the real world quick hacks and a couple of this, you know, a couple dirty tricks and stuff. But like, as for deep diving into the net, that is something that they literally only scratch the surface of. Like, there's they could have gone so much deeper on that and and the game would have been a lot longer um it would have been a whole lot bigger because you literally have to take the real world and create a mirror copy of it and that's the net version and mm-hmm. and like go out and make crazy things like it's it's almost as much as suddenly discovering that there's an upside down cast castle in Castlevania <laughs> Symphony of the Night. Like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean over 200%? <laughs> like, yes, yes, there's 200% of the map. Um, so like, uh, I kind of wish that they had expanded upon that a lot. Maybe again in, in the next game, uh, they will see this like, challenge and take it up because while while having a cyber deck is very advantageous and it essentially lets you cast spells that's about it um yeah and there's so much more to the world once you start diving it like deep diving into the net and stuff and like because like i mean they kind of touch on it a little bit where you're interacting with johnny and you know you're 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 seeing his old flame who's now this ai that's like beyond the black wall wall and stuff and um and i love how they they show you how fatal the black wall is yeah when when songbird goes nuts and one of the hidden cyber decks in the game i haven't tracked it down yet but i've heard what it does is like it has a very specific quick hack where you take someone's mind and just shove it beyond the black wall for a second or two. Oh my god! <laughs> and and their mind gets devoured because it's you shoved it beyond the black wall and you just let it go. And their their body just falls lifeless to the ground. <laughs> it's like I know that that's amazing. Super super devastating, <laughs> like and just. Like they give you that sense of power in one of the endings of like, oh yeah, you're you know you're you're linked up with Songbird and you're wielding the black yeah, wall. You get fucking like Emperor it's... Palpatine lightning, oh, yeah. which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just that wonderful power trip, right? Yeah. It's like, oh yes, it was like man, this, this is... was so hard, like surviving up until this point. You're just getting constantly bombarded. This mm-hmm. fucking helicopter won't leave me alone. And then just and then suddenly it's just like I understand now. Mm. Everything is easy. Yep. Squish. Yeah. It was so good. <laughs> so good. And it's so rewarding, like, if you play that ending like after you've survived the stupid robot that tries to kill And that is exactly <laughs> what I did, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You got it in that order, yeah. I, yeah. It's I oh did, my god. I did that robot thing yeah. and I was like I don't know if I want to do this four times. I'm really hoping it goes down a different path. I don't want to do yeah. this robot. Again. I loved that too, how it's like two very distinct uh, combat areas that are separate from each other, depending mm. on on like who you betray and stuff. And like, oh man, I, I, I absolutely loved all of all of Phantom Liberty. Uh, I do wish Phantom Liberty was a little bit longer. I, I get it. It's a DLC. We're we got it, you know. We got it, and um, we got a lot more than 
<clears throat> our money's worth out of it. Um, just with like, you know, you get the, the relic unlocked, you get all mm. of this extra stuff. Um, you get a whole new area, you get infinite, you get two sets of infinite missions. Um, oh man, I loved, I loved the, uh, the drops, like the military drops all the time. Yeah. It's like, Oh yes. I, I'd, I'd see, I'd hear the plane coming across and stuff. And it was just like, yes, yes. <laughs> Where is it? Where's the red smoke? And I'd start tracking and I got, I got kind of vicious about it. I'd sit there and wait. I'm oh like, my no, god! No, I'm, I'm, I'm the first person I'll here. Wait. I'll just wait. <laughs> I know they're coming. It's like I know they're coming. I know they're going to try to come and get the loot out of here and everything. It's like I'm not here for the loot. <laughs> <laughs> the loot's just the bait for what I'm really here for. I was, I was so I am so vicious in the game. Like it is, like. Crimes against humanity but levels of vicious in the game. Oh, that's I, great. I I take pop shots at people with the with the silence pistol and nope. That was one of my favorite parts of Ghost of Tsushima was um, when you were such a badass and like swapping between the different fighting styles and stuff where suddenly one of the enemies realized he's just toying with us mm. and he just drops his bow and drops his sword and says, I'm out and like starts yep. booking it. He's <laughs> like, Nope, Nope. He's just toying with us. This is just a game to him and four people have died. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, that no. I, I love that level of AI for enemies and stuff. And of course, I was vicious in that game too. And I pull out the bow and arrow and shoot them in the back while they were running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true, truly the hero we need. Truly, <laughs> yeah, 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 the hero we need. Mm -hmm. Um, now I was always a force of nature. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of touch on what we briefly brushed on the, the, the quests, uh, the range of them. Were you, were you happy or did you would you have wanted a little bit more diversity or you... I, 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 miss, I miss the corpo, uh, the corpos using the runners. Like I said before, mm -hmm. like that's like you never get I mean you always get hired by normal people. Like the jobs are always generated by a normal person and they go through the fixer. You never get the corpo jobs that come through a fixer. They, they, they just, none of them exist that, yeah. that, you know, to a satisfying degree. Um, smuggling things around night city. Mm. Nope. Nowhere to be found. Um, a revenge job. Like I, I would have loved to see a quest line where there's a revenge job that, um, against other runners that are, you know, competent, well-equipped. They have San Deviston, they have higher end equipment and stuff where like these runners just screwed over their fixer, like a revenge job or something like that. Like there's so much depth to the world that was kind of skipped over and glossed over, uh, that, could have been conveyed via some of these additional side quests. Yeah. Um, and again, like I get it. You can only do so much with so much time yeah. and so much money. But again, hoping, hoping for the sequel to just fully expand the world and allow us to have more. Um, have more depth, have more variety. Hmm. Uh, you know, like yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send you on this these corpo quests and and stuff. And eventually, like like always, the corpo should eventually recognize that you might know too much of their business, yeah. and then try to kill you. No, that would have been yeah, really interesting if you had a few more of them types of quests of where even if the person that you sided with. They just want to silence you. You know too much. Mm -hmm. 
and stuff like that. Yeah. That would have been really, really good. And 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 that happens. That definitely happens in the world, where um, you know, yeah, it's like no, you 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 know too much of our dirty laundry. You've pulled we we love you and we we think you're efficient and you've pulled a lot of jobs for us. But it's time to clean up all of our loose ends, and you happen to be one of them. I really, yeah. really expected in the FIA, like when you're delivering song, I really expected to get shot there. Maybe that's just yep. me being paranoid. Maybe. I was just waiting for like Reed, she like her to be like, "Oh, thank you for your, for your, you know, your service," and then just getting capped in the back of the head. <laughs> yes, yes. But they, they didn't, like they didn't <clears throat> go down that route. I mean. There are some GMs that would have would have uh, made that happen. That would have been their choice for the campaign. Mm -hmm. Is like, well, you know, yeah, you've done all of this neat stuff, and all right, roll new characters. Wait, what happened? Oh, uh, you were all killed, executed. <laughs> like, like, oh no. <laughs> but again, like, it's a DLC. It's supposed to insert itself halfway through the game. Um, or well, towards more towards the end, yeah. and uh, like around level thirty or so, and you're supposed to be able to continue on afterwards. Um, so, yeah, they kind of like handcuffed themselves a little bit, um, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. Like, it is possible for, you know, Myers to actually be that good of a person or at least that much of a military mind to suddenly realize this person's an asset mm. and I might want to call on them again in the future because I've seen how they work. Yeah, it really did feel I, I preferred the songbird outcomes, I'd say personally, yeah. but that's because I enjoyed her as a character and stuff. They really, really went hard on these FIAs. It feels maybe like they want to set something up for a, for a sequel with you tying back into them. Maybe if you pick up as V again. I don't think we're going to pick but up as V I don't v think again. we're going to be picking up as V, but keeping the door open for a character to then do that. Because they're really, it was a really cool feeling. Like I enjoy like spy stuff. Yeah. Undercover agents and stuff. So like that oh my that God. really and, and the, really cool itching on that. The 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 ending credits is just a straight up homage to to 007. Mm. No, absolutely. And yeah, it's just like congratulations, you have survived this spy game world <laughs> yeah. of of like <laughs> huge amounts of espionage and intrigue that like nope you can't even trust your friends and mm. like that's that was the thing like that i kind of noted at the end was like you know you you can you can have a bunch of different endings from the dlc and it's really about like you know who do you have left at the end yeah who, that was who are your who are your allies at the end and stuff it was really gut wrenching when you're in the hospital and they're like, "Yeah, like you have to wait your transport. Like, go call like your friends and see like what's going on." And you scroll through that list and it's just, yeah. I think uh, of the people that I call, like only Judy really kind of landed on her feet. Like, yeah. The the oh, I'm drawing a blank on him. The the police officer guy, River. Is oh yeah, yeah, River, yeah. Jesus Christ, what the fuck happened with him? It was just you lost like hope. I know that like you're you were kind of you know, not not the the greatest aligned person, but I didn't expect that. Just uh, curveball out of nowhere. And it's just like yeah. wow. I that, mean that's crazy. Lo loss of all hope is is like i think that's what really changed him it was like mm. too many dark things not enough not enough things to 
to pull him back from that abyss. And that that's a crucial word, pull him back, because he says that like you you know you left, like mm-hmm. you were the the good thing that happened, and he kind of needed you, and you just weren't there, and it's just like. Dude, I've been in a coma for like two years. <laughs> like, like, yes, I've, and, I've he, been and then in a you coma. tell him that, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you know what? I'm kind of a dick. I gotta go." And it's just like, <laughs> "Wow, <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ!" Yeah. It, it, oh man. Um, and then the yeah. final, the final twist of the screw. Fucking Pan Am didn't even pick up her phone. The hell, man! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where was our moment? Do you remember the tank? Exactly. I was like, <laughs> man. But uh, good old Vic always. Oh man, what a He's what an underrated so character. Always, yeah, always there. Always had your back and was always looking out for you. That yeah, he he's essentially just the father figure yeah. that that uh is just so good so reliable he is that that base that you can you know build your stability on mm. but yeah i so uh speaking of like abyss and all this other death and all with the uh with the game uh once upon a time i had very crushing issues personal issues with death and dying and uh to the point of developing a phobia of funerals i i I couldn't do it um i would try to show up to a funeral and i would get super jittery and just could not stick around and stuff and so Unfortunately, it hurt a couple of people's feelings and stuff that I couldn't do it, that I, was, I couldn't show up to people's funerals and stuff. Um, some of my friends understood because they saw, uh, so I also have a fear of falling and stuff, but like they saw how I would react um, if I was like on a 27th story of a building and stuff and near like an, just an iron railing that mm. nothing else that was like barely above hip height. They would see me like glue to the wall and they saw the look in my eye and stuff. They'd see that same look in my eye when I was trying to to show up to funerals. What cyberpunk did for me was it made me realize that death is, I won't say not bad, but not not to be feared in such a way and it helped me actually get past all of that um including coping with the death of my friend who was my gm for netrunner or well uh, cyberpunk cyberpunk slash netrunner and Mm -hmm. um he uh so that's that's kind of like where the respect and more of the connection to the game has has come for me, where it's like, this helped me get over a phobia. Um, no, that's, a, that's, that's incredible. And again, like all the credit in the world to CDPR for being able to convey a story that was powerful enough that it could help someone get over a phobia. Again, guys, reach out to me about, you know, playtesting i've I've play tested a couple of other games and stuff and you know been beta tested uh you know things like that and again i'll do it for free if i can if i can make that one npc Hmm. um but yeah that's that's why the game earns so much respect from me is uh because it it changed me it it helped me Um, and for the better as well yeah and 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 for the better yeah. um and so like i had to see everything the game had to offer which is leading into the next question mm. so go ahead <laughs> yeah um obviously brandon's usually on the videos of us or with me on the channel and he he's expressed interest in achievements and stuff like that but 
doesn't really dabble in in hundred percenting stuff. So really wanted to jump on this topic as well because you had hundred percented it in the same way More that than I had. Once. I oh, really? Yeah, I so so once upon a time the trophies were separate. Uh, the PS4 trophies and the PS5 trophies were separate. Oh, I didn't even consider that because Xbox doesn't really embrace that. I know that's a big thing in place that you have like your stacks and stuff like that mm-hmm. of um, like Spider Man PS4 as a trophy list. And then if you get Spider Man PS5, you get a. Damn, you've done it twice. What a unit. That's crazy. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I, I platinum the game twice because, like, I mean, it was life changing for me, mm. and so, it, like I said, it's like if, and that was like after the second playthrough of the game was like when I suddenly realized, like, wow, I'm I'm over this now. I can I can show up to funerals and and be okay. So that's the the very moment when I decided, you know what, I'm I have to see everything that this game offers me, and. I used the trophies as a checklist. And even then, I did not discover everything. Hmm. Like, there's a whole mission side quest of, like, there's one choice that you can make for your... You're tracking down someone for revenge because the guy is, you know, uh, the, the person who hires you gets in the truck with you and stuff and you go you go around town and you chase the truck down and stuff. And... <clears throat> You can either complete the job by executing the target or not execute the target and follow along. And that whole mission, my friend Sanchatis told me about it, and it was like, oh, wow, I never knew this about this mission thing that's like a good 20 minutes long. You know, and... To this day, like there are still like undiscovered things. Like, um, do you know that there's a whole huge amount of Easter eggs dependent on how you dispose of Jackie's body? No, I didn't actually know. Yeah, if you if you send the body back to the family, you get the whole funeral thing. Yeah, and that's what I did. You know, yeah. Um, if you dump the body, something different happens. And it is, like, very shocking, apparently. <clears throat> and so that's what I'm going to be doing on this next playthrough is... Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to, like... Oh, that dump. hurts my I know, soul. it's... Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, you're looking at it going... I want to see what happens, but it's like I don't want man, to commit I feel, it. I, feel, I don't want to commit. It's like I feel so heavy-hearted after this. Like, oh god, I don't, I don't want to do it. This, I don't want to, I don't want to like dump Jackie's body in like a ditch somewhere. Mm. But the reward is you get to see this new thing. Yeah. So it's like a little bit of pain to be able to see something new or something. Mm. It's like, so yeah, it, I had to see, and I started by just doing the checklist of the hundred percent. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I turned around and like played a whole new game on the PlayStation five version because they didn't let you, like when the game first came out on, on the PS5 version, upgraded version of it, they didn't let you transfer saves from the PS4 Ooh. to the PS5. Would that so you changed? had to start over. Would that have changed uh, your approach? Would you have transferred it or would you have started from scratch? Um, that might have changed my approach at first, but I'm kind of glad that it happened the way things did because it's let me re-experience all of the changes from mm. from the from the get-go all the way through and stuff and it it made it easier on like learning how to uh deal with the new way that they're doing the cyber uh all, all the cybernetics and all of the skill trees 
Yeah, major it's like, overhauls. Yeah, it's because it's like, you know, oh, I'm level 50 and, and like now it's all the new skill trees and it's like, here's a buttload of points and you don't know how to spend them at all. Like, uh, <laughs> well, I guess that looks neat and that looks neat and that looks neat. Like, oh, man. Like, no, it's just, for me, it was easier to just relearn the system by slowly progressing through it and reading everything meticulously and like seeing how things work and react and it's like okay i can do this over here and this and i can get this and you know like but yeah i just they they earned it from me mm. like that's i don't 100 percent every single game that i get uh, a game has to be good enough to earn that that respect and effort for me. I did it in Cyberpunk twice. I did it in uh, Spider-Man and the DLC for Spider-Man. Uh, I did it in the main story for... Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Aloy? Um, uh, horizon. horizon, yeah, the first Horizon. Forbidden West. There's one. Yeah. There's yeah. There, there. The first Horizon. I did it in the main story. There's one thing in in the uh, the DLC that it's like eluded my grasp because I was like, oh man, I'm just not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the trials and stuff for the, oh, for the I, chief. Damn. Those are so. The, la- the very Creek last Valhalla one did the same thing. The, the very last thing. one is so rough, and yeah. I just can't get through it. Um, you know, uh, I I think I plat, yeah, I platinum The Witcher three. Um, That's something oh, yeah. that I want. I want to work. I think I'm only because I think rough. I did the same thing of you as well with because they they put the new shiny complete edition out. That, that is one of the very few instances where Xbox gets a brand new achievement list, and I was like, "Oh, I want the new stuff." It says like the Netflix um, armor and yeah. stuff, and all these, and so I've oh started my God. it again. It's, it's try the whirlwind build. There's there's a particular build where you extend the the range of the the sword and stuff, or mm. and and you just basically whirl the sword <laughs> around your head all the time. You, and you just become this like walking thing of death yeah. and you're like po- popping potions and all this other stuff. And, and like you pop them in a particular order and yes, you poison yourself a little bit, but you're doing it on purpose to increase your damage. Mm. And it's like, it's, uh, that's, that's the combat style I went with. And it's so much fun. Cause it's like, it's like, Oh, there's these eight monsters and they're showing up and you're like, boys, you didn't bring enough. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll wait here and let you go get a couple of friends and come back. But like, you know, you didn't bring enough here. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a, a game has to be good enough to earn my respect to want to 100%. It. Yeah. it is, it is me like doing a tip of the hat. What did so, you, yeah, you? What did you feel about the list of Cyberpunk? Though? Did you feel like the easy. the things that they asked you to do were did that enhance the enjoyment of the hundred percent, or were there? Or you said easy, so that kind of answers my <laughs> of, were there any <laughs> annoyances and stuff? <laughs> no, no, that that was they, like I mean, there's a couple of things where it's like, oh, okay, that's like that that might be a little difficult, or oh, I'm gonna have to jump through this hoop a little bit. Um, buying every vehicle. <laughs> was like oh yeah, man that was like that you're going you guys you guys are, it was like you guys are going to make me like i had friends that basically save scummed that where they went and bought the most expensive car and then they turned around and like loaded the save and went and bought all of the other vehicles too like later and I'm like oh <laughs> so yeah that's they they save scummed it that's one that's coming in and out but yeah, the um, uh, that was the roughest one. Was that? Um, yeah, because you, know, you had to. And... Dr- I don't know if they change. You had to drive to them locations to pick mm-hmm. the car up as well, and that was just. Yeah. Was, uh... That now now it's just you 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 show up to the vendor and you just spend all the money and that's it. And that's how it but, should have been. But like I had to, 
Yeah, I, I, I was a, a big tech person on <clears throat> back when you could basically take a bunch of parts, make a bunch of rifles, sell the rifles, turn around and like take like half of your rifle, you know, half of the rifles that you took, that you made, strip them all apart again, get more parts than what you put into them. I back. think we did the same thing. I think and we did the exact over, same thing. There was, there was one particular green rifle, the, like mm. the Nekamura rifle or something yep. like that. That was the best one to do it with. And I just recycled those things over and over and over again. And I would do it right next to a shop because I would, I would make so many of the rifles that I would burden myself and couldn't yep. walk anymore. And it's like, uh, shot key, here's 400 rifles. And they're like, what about the other 400? Those are the ones I'm going to be stripping down to make more rifles. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back in about 10 minutes with another 400 rifles and 400 of, and, and I'll keep the 400 again. Like, ah, oh, it was just over and over again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I love all the vehicles. I, I, I was actually pretty good at driving in the game. Um, the motorcycles also drive very well. Uh, yeah. It's just, and the vehicle combat is fun. Like, if you're ready for it. If you're not ready for it and you're like, oh, well, I have like a sledgehammer and, <laughs> and a katana and a sniper rifle and I get in the car. No, no, you've made a mistake. <laughs> you, need, you need to like, if you can use smart weapons, it's it's going to make your life a lot easier in vehicle combat. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it. Yeah, I had to. I had to one hundred percent it just because uh, it changed my life. Um, I loved the world. I've been in love with the world since nineteen ninety six, and you know this. I'm still playing the game to this day. Like yeah, it's, it's unbelievably you went, as fun. you said, you jump right back in for another another mm -hmm. playthrough. So you would, by the sounds of it, recommend that if anybody is interesting in hundred percent in it, giving it a go, it's a good list and a good experience. Um, it's a good list. It's definitely a good experience. Uh, being able to drive all the different cars, is, like, and seeing how they react, and finding the one like the. I love the coyote. I know everyone was in love with the quote Batman car and stuff and like, Oh, it's so fast. And what? No, no. I love, the, I love the little trashy looking coyote with the dual machine guns on the front. Because if you know how to drive that car, you can literally make it dance. So like, yeah, just, just the ability of crafting your own, experience throughout the whole world is so rewarding oh man we're at the last question aren't we yep R wrapping <laughs> up with uh, uh it's, it's a positive a positive closure which you know there's been quite a lot of positivity with the game you know i haven't, <laughs> I haven't had too much negative to talk about it but um They've obviously they made the the Netflix animated series. It's had many graphic novel prints. It definitely feels like a series that they're not going to be doing a one and done deal. This definitely feels like a sequel is in the works, and not only a sequel, it has the potential to become a really deep rooted established series. So. Assuming they do make a sequel, what would be like the dream thing? Like, would you want it set back in Night City? Would you like it to be set in a completely different area? Oh. Would you like characters to return, or would you like it to be an all original cast and stuff like that? So the whole world of that is alive. And it should evolve the way that it should. There, there will be characters that are dead that should be dead. Mm -hmm. There should be some characters that should have cameos back and stuff. I would like to see. I would like to see Night City again. 
but I would also like to see like two or three other major areas. I would like to go to Russia. I would like to go to Tokyo. I would like to go to South America. I would like to go over to, uh, you know, London is actually one of the (laughs) places that's like a fairly deadly place to go. Um, yeah, I can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just imagine cyber, like all of Cyberpunk suddenly being dropped inside of London, and it's like, oh, God. I think it would improve the crime rate of being a little bit easier. <laughs> Are you saying an armed society is a polite society? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I would, I would love to see all of that expanse, and I would love to see have the ability to jump around and stuff between those areas and stuff. It's like, you know, I'm not expecting us to be able to like have our own airplane and fly. No, that's we yeah, get on like a, a lo- loading, yeah, a loading. Yeah. And we load thing. into the next area. Yeah. So, uh, so I'd if- love to see New York in cyberpunk, you know, like these are like highly dangerous places. And stuff, and it's just it it adds to that level of excitement. Like Night City is like where people start and go and stuff, mm-hmm. but like some of the top end people in Night City, in like in this world in the lore, like oh yeah, it's, it's some big hotshot in Night City. You know, they leave Night City, they go to New York, and they get their asses kicked, and they come mm-hmm. back to Night City to like lick their wounds and stuff. It was like, oh god, no, never mind, I'll <laughs> stay here, kind of thing. Um, you know, going to Tokyo, like, yeah, where it's like, oh yeah, um, did you pull a job against Arasaka, and they have your face? Oh, you landed in Tokyo. You're dead. Like. That would be a really interesting it's, concept to have of having a like, system in which the different areas would react depending well, on who you've sided with. It would be a reputation system, yeah. right? That's and that's something I really like. I wanted that in Sleeping Dogs, where there's a reputation for being a cop or a reputation for being a face, but I wanted more consequences. I wanted positive things a- attached to that reputation. Also want consequences too. Yeah. Um, because like not everything is good. Uh so I want that. I want like your reputation with each megacorp or me- reputation slash infamy with each megacorp, with each street gang, with each um, you know, with each of your uh um your fixers. Cause like Say your fixer wants you to do the job a specific way, and you just go completely against it. And like, oh, I'm not going to stealth this mission. I'm just going to walk in and blow everyone away with a with a room sweeper, you know, and and just like scatter gun everybody. Um, you know, okay, yeah, you got the job done. They're not happy with you, and your reputation with them takes a nosedive. So maybe they stop offering you as good of jobs. Maybe they start offering you less money. Maybe you can, like with The Witcher, you could negotiate money. Mm. You should be able to do that in here too. They've done it before. They can do it again. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I, want, I want multiplayer. I know it's a tall order. I know it's a hugely tall order and stuff. Um, competitive or co-op out of curiosity? I want, I want co-op. Mm. I don't want competitive. Uh, the world is competitive enough. <laughs> Uh, now, now, if it's like two teams running towards the same objective and stuff, and the objective is not to kill the other team, but the objective is to get this thing, get the shiny and run away with it or something, yeah, no problem. Um, you know, I know that they've done skill chips where it's like you kill someone and you pick something up and one of your skills goes up by a certain percentage. It's not the way it works in... Um, in the tabletop game. In the tabletop game, say there was a skill chip for lock, lock picking. You buy it, it's a, it's a level five skill chip for, for lock picking. You pop it into your head, 
and now you have lock picking it at a five. If if you think that you're developing yourself and your skills and stuff, and you learn lock picking and you develop it at a one, it's not math. The skill chip is already above you, so you don't get to add the one on top of the five. Mm. It's underneath the five in a, in that layer. Mm. Now, when you naturally progress to a six, you just naturally are at a six, and that chip is useless to you now. So you pop it out and you go sell it, but. You know, it's not additive. It's like it gives you a base level and you can work beyond it and stuff, but it's, you know, that's what skill chips were supposed are supposed to be originally. That's a really not. cool system. I like that. And that way you can like <clears throat> so the NPC that, that I want to create his name is Chiphead Joe. And <laughs> he's a little crazy because he's gotten a little too much cyberware. He's a little eccentric. But he has this like huge bag of skill chips and stuff, and he'll just sit there and go like, you know, oh, I don't not, I'm not so sure I can plan this out or whatever. And he's like, hold on a second, and he sits there and he fumbles through, and he's like, this one, and he pops it in, and he's like, okay, now we're gonna do it this way, and blah. so he, he he literally has this huge bag of skill chips and stuff, and some of them are faulty, <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of comedic and stuff. Um, where it's like he pops one in and he starts twitching a little bit and he goes, oh, ooh, wrong one. And like he, or one of them's mislabeled and stuff and like he pops it in and he's like starts speaking Chinese and he's like, oh, wait, no, wrong one. That's <laughs> like, great. I got to fix these labels. So it's like just this level of comedy. But that's what the skill chips are supposed to do. I get that the game that CDPR wanted them to be something more active and more rewarding for the character and stuff. But Again, the skill system in the game is a little uh, narrow. Um, all it is is an experience tree, yeah. and I'm really so kind of much hoping. Much more simplistic. Uh, I hope that they yeah, yeah that they have a real skill it. system, yeah. like an RPG style skill system, like in Skyrim, where you're like lock picking and stuff, and you know various things like that. So yeah, I just I, again like a little bit more true true to color for the uh for the tabletop rpg and stuff um i definitely want the the expanded quest there is so much that they could expand this with like they handed us a flower that's what they did with this current game and i'm looking at it going this hasn't fully bloomed yet mm. And I think I think that uh, they have the potential to really, really outdo themselves with what they could do in the next game, especially since if uh, since they have given up on the red engine and they're now using Unreal Engine Five, which it's like I'm glad they're doing that because. Stop reinventing the wheel. Someone else has already done something that is absolutely excellent. Concentrate on your story. It, it will save Take you all of your so money much and more space, time and as well. Yeah. yeah, and allow them to just focus on the task at hand instead of, as you said, reinvent the wheel. Yeah, they they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Someone has has created an excellent game engine that is it is so good that other companies are looking at it going we could do something better it's going to add 10 years to our game and it's, and by the time we're done it'll be out of date yep. so the, f the sheer fact that that burden is off of them is got my hopes very high. Probably too high. Ah. <laughs> a repeat <laughs> I mean, I'll be of the cycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> um, um, I just, I think they, I think it's just going to be wonderful. So, f final, final, final question. Um, just out of curiosity, because Brandon said 
I remember. I don't think he's he's not going to be pre-ordering any CDPR stuff moving forward. If they dropped Cyberpunk two in the next few years of like a trailer and stuff and pre-orders and stuff go live, would you would you be considered to to buy at that, or would it be something that you would definitely wait? I'm hard pressed to pre-order anything. Um, uh, because price is usually an issue. Um, things uh, like I, and and I'm not like the the gaming industry as a whole has changed. Um, nothing is ready day one. I am. They never put their best foot forward uh, day one. Um, so, as much as I would want to, like, just grab it and like dive into it and let the whole world wash over me again and stuff, um, no, I would not pre-order. Um, just because games are so overinflated in price. Um, like i can't i can't think of a single game even cyberpunk um that its base cost should be close to 100 bucks mm -hmm. there's no there is nothing of that value like you know ga games to me cannot reach that level of value cuz it's it's a game. It's it's not something that you do instead of living your life. It's you know something to do that adds to your life. But um, yeah, I I just with with the way that patching is, with the way that all of these companies try to rush themselves and stuff. Like no, I can't. I can't. Um, I mean, even Baldur's Gate three, like there were some issues on the PlayStation 5 for me that I'm just like, oh man, there's some UI choices I don't like. And it's like, I'm kind of glad that I waited as long as I did to start playing it. Because, hmm. you know, the, the development and release cycles are so short. Yeah. They have to get it out um, just because they need cash to reinfuse the it back into the company yeah. and it's almost like they're overspending on absolutely every game and stuff and not living leaving like any wiggle room or anything like that no the so, budgets have have exploded it's it's baffling yeah. because you you saw back i can't remember when development must have started on kingdoms of amala but that was like one of the the very first games where it was like, this is getting out of control. Mm -hmm. like you're talking hundred million dollar budgets in in what world? And obviously that's become more more of a norm now. But even then it's it's like How are you expected to make a profit on this? Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Cause even like massive big hitters like like a cyberpunk and stuff like that, like it is it, still like a, a throw of the dice whether or not this is it will be successful or not, even from a big company. A like big you're gamble. talking, yeah, you're talking a, a massive company that had the pedigree of the Witcher behind them, but you still have people that are like, I don't really like cyberpunk, and that's one side of it. And then you also have, you know, if you screw it up like they did, that that could have killed them off as a company. It's, it's crazy, yeah. yeah every, everything, everything is just such a high stakes gamble these days and stuff and it's like i yeah i just i can't do pre-orders mm. uh not anymore like i mean especially when like sometimes you you pre-order a special edition of a game and it's like yeah here's the statue and here's this poster and here's this slip of paper with the dlc code on like you're wait what Oh, oh, why'd you have to mention that? 
No, they did that to me with Persona 3 this year, and it oh, fucking God. sucks. It's like, can't you, like, I've paid for the the big bucks edition. Like, just have it encoded on the disc, please. Yeah. Please just give me the disc. Like, the disc is, like, what, $5 to produce. Mm. Like, I would have given you an extra $5 if you had just put, given the, put the disc with this special Oh, edition. they gave me the disc. I, I meant the DLC on the disc. It would have, oh, it would yeah, have been nice. Yeah. That that's an even fucking worse thing of when they don't even bother giving you a disc. That that blows my mind. That I don't yeah, understand yeah. why that has uh, ever ever become acceptable. It's like you're uh, you're squeezing for so much money and you just can't put a disc in. A disc in. Yeah, yeah. It's like why why are we being this chintzy about it? Mm. Like just Oh uh, penny smart dollar dollar stupid. <laughs> like I'm, I miss working designs. I miss a company that like is is ex- when they're packaging their stuff together and shipping it out, where they are genuinely excited about how their customers are going to view their product. Mm. They're like, oh man, it's going to be so good when they open this thing up and they realize that like the jewelry that that the characters are wearing in the RPG are in the box here with it. Like that level of genuine excitement is what these companies need to get back to. Now I'm getting back on the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is a good point. They, they, it feels like they, they were also fans as well is why they mm-hmm. put so much passion in it. And that that's really dissipated as of late you see people like the big it's rare you dream, see it. yeah you see the bit the big dream job back in the day that people wanted to land was working at blizzard it was a big thing like a lot of people really really loved you know early 2000s blizzard when it was at its peak with world of warcraft diablo mm-hmm. firing on all cylinders and they've They've just turned that into into hell for people working there. It's it's soul crushing and it it's crazy. And it, it's just what happens when so much money gets put into something. It it loses its passion and just becomes business. Yep, yep. When a uh, when when they when the goal is no longer a a wonder the best product that you can come out with, and it's more about profit than than product. That's. It's when you lose your soul as a company. Mm. But yep, yeah, <laughs> no. But again, I am very, very excited, hoping for the next, like, just anything with the next Cyberpunk. Um, hell, if they even reached out to me and said, "Here's a review copy," I'd be like, "No embargoes, no, <laughs> no, no, no editing what I say," like. Like I'm, I'm going to hold you to task. You're, we're going to put your money. Yeah, you know, we're going to do this whole, you know, put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. Um, because I don't know. Like, I think, I think I'm pretty close to an expert at the game. And uh, again, like, I, I am a fan that I want to see them succeed. Yep. Well, that was one hell of a talk. And uh, yeah, re- really, really fun. Really fun to dive into, oh, yeah. into Cyberpunk. Um, definitely want to do more of these types of things of diving deep into a game. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me and and listening to me prattle on about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's what this channel's here for. Yeah, you know, un unscripted, unrestricted, talk as long as you like. So, yeah, um, yeah, um, I think me we have something cooked up that we haven't said before i don't think which was the the wheel game thing that we have which we'll be inserting into a video which is a really exciting thing that we have on the horizon 
Um, I don't know when that'll be going, though. We have to try and lock that down at some point. Yep. We're going to have to lock that down. I'm going to have to run through and figure out five games. To... Have you not done your list yet? I have no, my I have list. not done I have my, my list. list I'm ready. I had my list ready that night. I was <laughs> like, I'm ready. You were so excited about this. I'm, mm. I'm almost worried. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always down to to recommend stuff for people to play and just throw little curveballs out and not not like you know like ha ah, you know play this it's it's bad or whatever like it's just really interesting oh. titles of that I think get overlooked and don't get enough love. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Can't wait to get that out whenever we we push that out. So yeah, that'll be this this review wrapped up thank you so much for watching and yep. uh make sure to check out Mount Dane's channel i'll be linking that if somehow you you, you stumbled on me before you stumbled on this guy <laughs> crazy uh so yeah thanks very much for watching